Now we come to the heart of the interview creation tool, the questionnaire that will ask you a series of questions designed to understand better what is important in the job you're trying to fill. We still have our admin bar at the top right. Over on the left, we have our quick links in the navigation bar. And then what you see in front of you here is uh, a partially filled out page one of two interview questionnaire pages. Each interview, pay, interview questionnaire page has 32 questions, so there's a total of 64 questions in the questionnaire, and there are several key parts to this particular page. You'll notice that, in this case, questions 1 through 4 have uh, a blue color around them. If you look closely, you'll notice that those questions have already been answered. You'll know whether or not a question has been answered based on the blue bar, and you can quickly scan down on any particular interview questionnaire page to see whether or not you've covered all the questions. The tool will not let you continue to page 2 or complete the questionnaire unless you answer all 64 questions. Okay. We'll also talk about the action buttons at the bottom of this page in just a minute uh, in another video. The two things I want to highlight here are the importance gr uh, numbers, 1 through 5, and also, of course, the questions. The heart of the interview questionnaire says that for any given job, there are some things that are more important than other things in that particular job. Um, you're going to be thinking about the job you're trying to fill and asking yourself on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being absolutely critical and 1 being not important at all, almost irrelevant, how important is that particular skill to the job? As you can see in this case, for an administrative assistant, follow instructions accurately is pretty darn important. And when it comes to data around travel and around uh, presentations and around communications and so on, data would be pretty important as well. On the other hand, if you look at number four, present effectively, probably an administrative assistant is not going to do that much presenting, if any at all, and so therefore that would get a one. Uh, oftentimes when people uh, do the interview creation tool, the questionnaire for the first time, they think, I really want somebody great. I'm going to give every answer a five. You can't do that because the interview creation tool enforces a bell-shaped normal distribution to all of your answers. And it does it on each page. So among your 32 questions on this page, you're going to have, have to have, have to end up with a distribution of a certain number of ones, more twos, mostly threes, and the same number, roughly the same number of twos as fours and the same number of ones as fives. Uh, the, the distribution is you can have two to four ones, four to six twos, eight to sixteen threes, and four to six fours, and two to four fives. Okay? Again, you can't have all fives. You can't have all ones as well. You've got to think about each, pos each uh, skill that we're asking about, each trait, each characteristic, and ask yourself, how important is it for this job? Um, the importance scale of none to critical, uh, with three being normal, which is often a good way to think about it. If you're uncertain about a particular answer, you can put it as three as well. I think that's probably normal. It doesn't seem too high or too low. That important scale stays the same on both pages. The idea is to give a, a good spread, if you will, of the various types of skills and their relative importance in a particular job. Um, and as I say, we'll learn in just a minute that the, the bell curve is enforced if you don't have a rough bell curve by the end of each of the two pages of the questionnaire, you will get an error message, which we'll show you in just a minute. So spend a few minutes answer the questions based on what you think that job has. It obviously, it would be different for different jobs. Uh, a, a CEO would have high marks probably in strategy and vision and persuasion uh, and communication. Uh, an admin would probably have more around data and accuracy and multiple projects and those kinds of things. Every job, of course, is different. And don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. Most people struggle a little bit the first time they do it and, and get an error message and then quickly see with the helping devices we'll show you in a moment, you'll be able to correct your errors and still feel good about the outcome of the questionnaire relative to the interview you're creating. 
Before you either save and close or continue using one of the two action buttons at the bottom of this questionnaire page, I want to remind you that of the 32 questions, we don't want to be trying too hard to try to enforce the bell curve distribution on a sample smaller than 32. In other words, don't try to take the first eight questions and create a little rough bell curve or the first 16 questions and create a bell curve. The shortest, having done hundreds of these, what Mike and I and Maggie and Wendy and I have learned is that uh, the shortest, the smallest sample that the bell curve, the normal distribution is, is applied to effectively is 32 questions. So don't be thinking as you go through the page, how am I doing? Wait until the end of the page and in fact let the error messages tell you how you did. Um, the first time or two you might have to go back and get a lot of errors. Uh, I typically do an interview. It takes me about 15 minutes to do a questionnaire now and I rarely get uh, error messages that require me to look at the distribution graph and make a decision about um, how what answers I might need to change and rethink a little bit. So don't apply the distribution, the bell curve thinking until you get to the end of the page one, end of page one and page two and of course the tool will do that for you so you don't have to be thinking about that in bits and pieces as you go through each page. Again at the bottom of the page you can either click save and close which will save the work that you've done uh, and and put it in your uh, interviews in progress uh, section of your my interviews page or if you click continue you'll get uh, the bell curve will be applied to your work and one of two things will happen either you'll get some error messages in which case it'll take you to the top of the page and tell you what you need to do differently or it will say uh, it will take you to page two of the questionnaire which means you did in fact have a normal distribution to your answers and so you're able to go on to the second page and now we see what happens when maybe our thinking wasn't as clear as it could have been and we get an error message uh, on the first page of the two pages of the interview questionnaire. In this particular case you'll notice there's a bright red box and it says I have too many answers, seven, with a value of one and, it, and the tool says you really can only have four and I have three answers with a, val with a value of two and I need more than that, I need at least four. We also have a view distribution button and that view distribution button is so important. We recommend the moment you get a red error message, you immediately click on the view distribution button and it will show you a, a bar graph that will tell you exactly how many, it will show you visually how many of each answers are over and under and it will give you an immediate sense of what you might need to do by reviewing all of the 32 questions on this page. At most, most people only have to move four or five answers around and it's a matter of making ones twos or twos threes or fours threes or fives fours for instance. This is the distribution graph which shows you where your answers fit in relative to the normal distribution that the tool is trying to apply to your answers. The blue bars, the vertical bars or columns represent how many answers you had um, in ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. And the red and green line graphs show you what the tolerances are, red being the lowest number you can have and green being the highest number you can have. Hopefully you can look at this graph pretty quickly and realize that I had too many number ones because my blue bar is higher than the green line uh, and I had not enough twos. I had j about the right, I had the right number of threes. I could have had more. I could have had a lot less. I barely had enough fours and I had enough fives. So looking at this graph, what I would immediately think to myself is I've got to I've got seven ones and I can only have three or four. So I've got to take some of my ones and make them twos. And probably what I'm going to do is move three of my ones over to twos. And that will keep me in compliance with ones and with twos.
twos and I will be done very very quickly. It may be that I also move a two over to a three that that would work in this particular case. Um, I may even rethink some of my other answers but in terms of following the bell curve, uh, in terms of giving us an understanding of what is more and less important for this particular job, in this case what I'm going to be most concerned about is taking a look at all my ones and asking myself could I not make some of them twos so that I could be within tolerance.